FRG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Georgia Ban and Father Rob Gallia, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Gospels and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another week of the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Episode one hundred and one, and I've I've come to save Father Rob, <laughs> so he's not by himself this time. Uh, yeah, it is. No, it's good. To, <laughs> good to have company. And episode one hundred and one, but it's we're actually episode fifteen of season five. Yes, that's got all the numbers right. We're nearly <laughs> at the end of this season. I can't believe how fast season five has gone. Yes, um, just like two more episodes after this. Three, three, three more episodes, and then we go on to season six. We, we're planning for season we six. We are, but if you've got any ideas or any suggestions, we would love to hear from you. So, um, please get in touch with us. Yeah, we have like we really want your ideas. We we're thinking of uh, so many things. Like, don't limit it. If you think that it's a good idea, could work, please let us know. We really want to know. We want to. Um, to cater for you. We want you to fall in love with Jesus. We want to keep it to the Gospels as much as possible. But anyway, we're not going to limit God in this. Absolutely. <laughs> Can't wait to hear what you come up with. <laughs> yes. Well, Alyssa is going to have to produce it. So, <laughs> so be nice. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> That's going to be good. Okay. So this week, um, I, honestly, this is my favorite week, my favorite solemnity, my favorite feast of the year. Now, I love Easter. I love all, all, all the feasts, the solemnities, the ascension, all of that. But Pentecost, goodness, it's just, uh, it's just the Holy Spirit. Where, where I get to talk about the Holy Spirit, there's nothing more powerful, nothing more beautiful. And I, I was brought up in a sort of Catholic charismatic renewal, and so the Holy Spirit has always played a, a very spirit, very important part. Pentecost has played a very important part in my spiritual walk. And yeah, so it's a, it's a very, it's a very exciting. special and exciting time. There's always lots of different events. I don't know whether we'll have them this year because of COVID. But there's always special events on around the time of Pentecost, mm. and um, yeah, but that, it's a very exciting like week. events. And yeah, things. yeah. Uh, well, we we have um, we do have an event, a virtual event in that sense, an online course, which we'll talk about in just a, if you as uh, later on. So if you'd like to prepare for this um, Pentecost, we have some amazing resources for you. That's right, but we might get stuck into this week's gospel, and it comes from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Beautiful reading, and it shows the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence, the power, the glory of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit invites us, empowers us to live the Christian life. It's impossible. It is impossible without Holy Spirit. You know, one of the things that I I love um, is that um, I I watched a television series, a Christian series, and they talked about the, the Holy Spirit, but they never talked about the Holy Spirit. They never referred to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit. They refer to the Holy Spirit as Holy Spirit. Oh, really? So um, they would talk as a, about instead of the power of Holy Spirit. Uh, that's so that personal, so... personified. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> You're not comfortable with that. It's weird, I think, because I'm so used to hearing it as <laughs> the, Holy, the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah. It is that because that's functional in a sense. The Holy Spirit. That's what it's a, an adjective. It's like defining. Um, maybe uh, or an, a noun like, but Holy Spirit is just uh, all of a sudden you've bypassed the description. Yeah, and you like instead of referring to Jesus as the Son, you refer to him as Jesus. Yeah, but the Holy Spirit has no name but Holy Spirit, so you can say 
I'm like, I'm talking about a friend. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Holy Spirit. I can see why that would do it. It makes sense now that you've spoken about it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I just, uh, yeah, I, I love um, I loved that series. But anyway, let's get into the Word of God. Let's break that open. Uh, there's a lot uh, about the function of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit um, in, in, in this gospel. Yeah, but I guess before we got to the Holy Spirit, we had the disciples waiting in the upper room and... Um, I think I, I wanted to bring out this point, like the way that Jesus um, was received by them and, and the way that, you know, Jesus rea- re- reacted when he first saw them. I can't think of the word I'm trying to look for here, but these same disciples were the, the disciples who had denied Jesus, who mm. had abandoned Jesus when um, he was crucified, but they were waiting in this upper room and Jesus came into their midst. Um, it says that those doors were locked because of fear of the Jews and maybe I don't know. I don't know what it was like for the disciples, but maybe that door would have opened and they would have seen Jesus and they would have been scared too because it's like they had already abandoned Jesus. Like, was Jesus coming back? Like, to, to say, them. yeah, to be like, how dare how you, dare you me? leave me? You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus came and he met them. He said one word. He said the word shalom, which means yeah. peace be with you. And so it's like Jesus is. Um, greeting the disciples with with mercy instead of revenge. Yes. I mean, we knew he wouldn't. Yes. Well, I, I suppose, look, as we're preparing for this, you brought up this point. And I, to be honest, I was uncomfortable with the idea that the apostles would have been um, scared of Jesus, you know, scared of Jesus' reaction. Because if they spent three years with him, why would they be in any doubt that he loves them and was ready to forgive them? But at the same time, you did mention, even now, that they had abandoned him, and and if they really did know Jesus, they wouldn't have abandoned him. They would have trusted him. So, yeah, I'm open to that idea that yeah. they were scared. Um, I and they were pretty interesting yeah. point. But it, they, yeah, it is an interesting point. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, yeah, I just I just pray that I will never be scared of, and we will never be scared of the the exactly. reaction <laughs> of Jesus with us. But uh, like he walked through the wall, he walked through the wall. There's uh, there's a lot of um, like we talk about this on Resurrection Sunday, but the the resurrected body, which is what we are going to have as well, had a lot of features. Um, the Holy Spirit could, I'm um, sorry, the resurrected body and yours and mine will be able to walk through walls. Mm-hmm. We'll, be, we'll carry the wounds that we had uh, before, maybe, because Jesus still carried his wounds. That's right. Which, which, I wonder if we'd still have tattoos. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, there are so, t- he'll be able to eat as well. He ate with them. He had fish with them, you know, and so yeah. so it's interesting. Um, the resurrected body is very far. I think we opened a can of worms now with you tattoos. We'll have to. I know. <laughs> no, actually, we we might revisit this topic very soon. So stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> okay, good. So this is yeah the power of the Holy Spirit as um, the power of the resurrected body as he comes in and he greets them, gives them peace, but he doesn't stay with the peace. He says now, nah, okay, well, now you have my peace. I leave you my peace. I give you now. What are you going to do about it? You are called to go and give this peace to others, this shalom to others, this good news, this um, hope for salvation, this hope for eternity to others. That's right. And so even though Jesus had come and, and he's bringing this peace, it's really important to note that he had already promised that he was going to return to his disciples. And so Jesus appearing to his disciples in this way is him fulfilling this promise. So when Jesus was farewelling the, the disciples earlier in this gospel, I believe it's John chapter 16, Jesus said, you know, they would they would weep and mourn and be in anguish when he left, but he promised that he would come back. And so he did. He did come back. And this is the moment where he he gives gives the disciples this peace to drive away that fear that that we knew they had at the start of this gospel. Yes, and he does that as as well through and then breathing on them. That's right. So like this um he, he the breathe the breath of God, this ruah, but it's the it, it's symbolic for two things that had already happened in the scriptures. Mm. The um Adam and Eve, you know, the the res the the life lifeless bodies came back. Ezekiel as well, the the valley of dry bones, breathe, he says, um, servant, breathe on these bones and they came to life. And he breathed on them because he was sending them out on a mission. And so mm. the, this breath of the Holy Spirit was like it was the power they needed to be able to fulfill this mission. It's like a secret weapon. Yes. And the, the, but the, the Ruah here symbolizes, this is where, why we have this reading on Pentecost Sunday. It is because that this very word, Ruach, in Maltese we say the soul is Ruach. So Ruach, Ruach means soul, it means spirit, it means breath, and it means life. 
ha, we have an expression hador ro they 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 came to life um and, and so it's like again from the valley of dry bones our language in malta is very is very catholic language yeah. it's very scriptural language and so they they things came back to life and that's what happened is jesus breathed on them and they came back to life because of ruah ruah is another name for the holy spirit so they came back to life with holy spirit and the reason i want to bring this point again not the holy spirit but with holy spirit because you see holy spirit is a person right uh, three persons of the trinity there's saint joseph no no <laughs> <laughs> no I'm joking there's you father sure I was awake. <laughs> father son and holy spirit and we'll be um we'll be talking about that a little bit more next week yes, as trinity well trinity. well a lot of solemnities it's coming it's so exciting up. isn't it yes yeah, so i get to wear white a lot yeah <laughs> in, the, in my investments it's funny own. i have some friends and we catch up um to celebrate certain feast days of the church and it's kind of like my social calendar yeah and so um, now this is it, all, it revolves around the liturgy like really <laughs> yes because feast day especially in lent i suppose you you get you can go out for cups of teas and donuts and and yeah. things while while you cuz solemnity is actually and feast days in lent don't count as lent but that's another that's story right. for another time <laughs> um but yeah so the holy spirit the holy spirit is sent upon them and this is i think one thing that we need to understand that holy spirit is not a flame not a breath holy spirit is not um water is not a dove these are symbols of the holy spirit the holy spirit is a person third person of the holy spirit that means what is what makes one a person uh, two things that make you a person one is your will that you have the will to do something or not to do something and your intellect that you have the capacity to think to refuse to make decisions and choices whether they're well informed or not informed so a will and an intellect those two things make you a person so and those two things give you your personality so the holy spirit so holy spirit has a personality which is distinct from the father's personality which is distinct from the son's personality but they're so united in love that they are one this is one of the <laughs> the going from a, probably a topic ahead yeah, yeah. a week ahead but the holy spirit has a will and an intellect and because they have a personality because holy spirit has a personality we can get to know that personality and this is where we as christians as catholics believe that we can and should have a relationship with god now jesus yes is in heaven um he's risen from the dead and in, in heaven the father uh, on the throne but holy spirit is here with us and that means jesus is with us the spirit of god is with us gone to a whole rant uh, yeah i think i can i can kind of weave this in a little bit so <laughs> the holy spirit is with us and just as the holy spirit was with the disciples when jesus gave them this great commission so this great commission so jesus was sent to reveal the father and accomplish you know his saving work here on earth and then jesus what he does with this is he sends the disciples out to to, to spread this all around the world and so the holy spirit is what enables them mm. to do that so they they need this divine assistance exactly and so holy spirit the holy spirit is there to allow us he, jesus never gave us a commission without the knowledge and the understanding that it is not us that is going to have the power to do it it, it, it the scripture says it's not by might not by power but by my spirit says the lord it's by my spirit it's by ruah you are going to have the power to yeah um, br- br- carry out this great commission this is the flames of the spirit do you know um, in the readings of the acts which is probably the, the reading that we're going to have as well at mass this week um is the uh, the the flame of the holy spirit and every time you have mass with the bishop you are reminded as well of the flames of the holy spirit that's why the bishop has a pointy hat it's oh, a symbol of okay. the flames of the holy spirit it's not a, a high hat saying hey i'm taller than you i'm more powerful <laughs> than you but it is a symbol to remind us that we cannot live our christian life without the power of the holy spirit and so it is the holy spirit again that is so central to our great to this great commission and so every time we do something every time we go out and proclaim we need to ask the holy spirit to empower us i ask the holy spirit all the time you know when i open the bible i say holy spirit please enlighten me guide me so that i may understand what your word is saying when i go out on stage yesterday i was speaking to whatever some students 250 students and i i still get scared i still get terrified and just before i go on stage i say holy spirit i like this prayer of moses lord if you don't go with me then i don't want to leave this place and so even holy even even moses before he knew about the theology of the holy spirit the theology of the trinity still depended on god and the power of god to fulfill his commission his great commission and so this is uh, uh, again 
it was in 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 what do you say it was intrinsic to jewish understanding that they couldn't do things without god yeah. But now that the disciples were faced with God who was leaving them, they finally figured out that he was God. Now he's leaving. And so they're thinking, okay, what are we going to do now? God was our strength before you came, God the Father. Now we realize that God is with us, Emmanuel, okay, Jesus with us. And that's you were our strength. Now where's our strength going to come from? Yeah, and it's just like it shows the nature of God as well, that God just didn't give them this commission and then off you go. There you yeah. go, like God... God knew they would need the Holy Spirit, and yes. that's why He gave it to them. Yes, and that's what He does. He He doesn't He He doesn't leave us orphans. You know, He He's God. God's not cruel. Mm -hmm. You know, He's not going to expect us to be holy by our own strength. It's impossible. He's not going to allow us to be um, find forgiveness for our sins by our own strength. It's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God has worked in in a sort of in a, a particular way through the church, the body, the church, um, which is the body of Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit, we don't have a dictatorship. The institution doesn't have a dictatorship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not kept in tabernacles. The Holy Spirit is uh, works in our hearts. Okay, so Jesus is in the tabernacle, yes, in the Eucharist, but the Holy Spirit is uh, empowers, is delivered to us, given to us um, through the church, even especially through sacraments, you know, baptism, confirmation, and one of the... Speaking of sacraments. Yeah, that, <laughs> that sacrament that you're about to mention yeah. is one of the most powerful <laughs> Holy right. Spirit moments that's impossible without the Holy Spirit. And so drum roll of what it is. Oh, the sacrament of confession and reconciliation. And so we see at the end of this gospel passage that the disciples are given the authority to forgive sins. Um, and so, yeah, Jesus is giving them this authority and it's with this authority that they're able to administer um, God's mercy with, through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is breathed on them and like God is acting through the church. And so what is forgiven by the church on earth is going to stand in heaven. And so this is the, the I guess, the first first thoughts we hear about the, the sacrament of yes. confession. And what is required for the forgiveness of sins? I think there are three things that are required. One is the confession of sin. Before it used to be, it didn't used to be in a confessional, actually. The confessional came later to protect the people. Before it was, they used to proclaim their sins in the in congregation. Public, that's right. Can you imagine that? Oh <laughs> and then eventually um, they said, oh, okay, it's, this is causing village gossip right here, yeah. you know? And so they decided to protect the people. And so they, the priest would do it on behalf of the community and absol absolve, like the whole community used to before say, okay, we forgive this person or we withhold the forgiveness of this person. Yeah. It was the church that gave or withheld. Now that authority was given by the church from the people on behalf of the people to the priest. Yeah. And so, and now it is the priest that administers that on behalf of Jesus, but also on behalf of the church. And this is where we have the power to withhold as much as the community. The only way we can withhold is if there is one, there are three things that are required and uh, that are sort of automatic uh, with the prayer of absolution. One is that there's a confession of sin um, and that you, you confess. Two is that you um, uh, are repentant, that you realize that you need to ask for repentance, so contrition. And then the, the third thing is the, the um, desire um, not to do it again. Okay, so like... Um, so these three things are necessary. If they're all there and they're authentic, then they're real. And sometimes there's need for restitution. For example, for particular sins like stealing, you can't just go to confession and think, ah, oh, okay, I'm forgiven so I can keep the $10,000 that I stole from my work. No, there is a requirement for restitution. Yeah. If there's abuse, again, you have to make sure that it is reported to the police. You have to make sure that this and that. There's a lot of things to talk about here. But when it comes to reconciliation, um, the church has the power to withhold only in as much as we don't have those three things, mm -hmm. which is a conf a confession, um, the, um, contrition, and again, um, restitution or uh, desire not to do it again, and desire not to do it again. <laughs> a lot of theology there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to confession, everybody. <laughs> yes, go to confession. Yes, it's a, you see, the, uh, this, this is one of the most powerful, um, one of the, the most powerful sacraments. I, I'm just humbled, you know, I'm just humbled. And I often say this about confession, the priest is not there to judge. He's, the priest doesn't sit there as a judge. This, 
The priest sits there as an uh, an arm, uh, an embrace of God's forgiveness. And you're not going to impress the priest. He's heard it all before. Um, the devil's not very original. He's mm -hmm. sometimes more creative than others, but it, yeah, I, I've never been impressed in a confession. I can just tell you that. Um, especially after the after two months of well, I suppose the first month of of being ordained, you're just impressed that people um, are holier than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and some not yeah. so much. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so this is the the beautiful um, gift that God has given us um, of the Holy Spirit in that's, today's gospel. That's right, and I guess if you guys want to learn a little bit more about the Holy Spirit and Pentecost and what it all means and how you can apply that to your life, we do have an online course. We we are really big on online courses here at FIG Ministry, mm -hmm. and you can check out our Holy Spirit and Pentecost online course if you go to courses.frgministry.com. The production of this podcast would not be possible without the support of our donors and ministry partners. If you've been blessed by this podcast, please consider supporting this ministry financially by making a one-off donation or becoming an FRG ministry partner from just $5 per month, as well as enabling FRG ministry to impact hearts across the world through the creation of online resources and outreach programs. As an FRG ministry partner, you will have access to our rewards program where you can receive exclusive benefits and content to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. For more information about becoming an FRG ministry partner, head to frgministry.com slash donate. So also, if you're interested in um, supporting this ministry um, as a ministry partner, please do. We uh, are able to run this uh, podcast only because of our, the generosity of our ministry partners. Dad joke. I have a dad joke. I'm ready. I found a Twitter page that has dad jokes. I haven't followed it yet. but Oh, really? It's maybe something but There I are some follow. pages on Instagram. People send them to us and uh, okay. I do enjoy reading them. They're quite good. Some of them are good. I don't get dad jokes, but I like dad jokes. Mm. I have a um, uh, my drummer, Zeb, he... <laughs> He's the dad joke king. He's pretty good. I must admit. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> okay, so what do you get? Um, what do you call a pencil that doesn't work? I don't know. Pointless. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. No, not bad. Not, not bad. bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. So uh, th this is, um, again, um, what we're going to talk about in, in a few moments. This week's saint we're going to be talking about is Saint Catherine of Siena. Um, she's the patron saint of fire prevention, <laughs> which is really funny. I sorry, I thought this was funny because one of her most famous quotes is, "Be who you are meant to be, and you will set the world on fire." Yes, I, which is a such I was amazing studying quote. for the. I know it's an incredible quote. I was studying for this, and I chuckled, and my husband's like, "What are you laughing at?" And I explained. Um, <laughs> was yeah. he amused? Uh, he doesn't, he didn't really, <laughs> he didn't really go, it's just another one of my Catholic <laughs> things. Um, but, okay, a couple of really interesting points about St. Catherine of Siena. So when she was, she was from a big family, she was the 25th child born to her mother, after, um, although half of her brothers and sisters didn't survive their childhood. When she was 16, though, her sister died um, and her parents proposed that she should marry her sister's widowed husband, but she... Catherine refused, and so she cut off all of her hair so she would ruin her appearance, and she began fasting. Um, how, how good it is to be stubborn sometimes. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> yes. So a lot of the saints were stubborn, <laughs> were really stubborn. Um, and then I guess at 21, a, a big thing happened to her. She had what's called a mystical experience, and Father Rob's going to... Um, yeah. What, what does a mystic look, mean? I, I think, look, when... God gives, the Holy Spirit gives a gift to some people, uh, this gift of mysticism, of uh, encountering God, like in the book of Revelation, which is all a mystical experience. It's where, the, um, for example, um, I, I don't know, a, a lot of saints, St. Saint Joseph Coppertino, St. Claire used to see like a television mm -hmm. and she used to see things, so that's why she's a patron saint of television. And there are, um, uh, even St. Francis of Assisi got to hear the voice of God build my church. And so these are mystical experiences, extraordinary experiences. But some people are mystics. They are placed in a place where they can listen to the Holy Spirit. 
They can listen to what God is saying in a particular way. Um, this is a gift. This should always be tested as like any other gift. But it is God speaks through mystics. Like, for example, at Lourdes, the, the children at Lourdes and um, Fatima and all, all of these. These are beautiful mystical experiences, um, sort of where heaven meets earth. Mm. And but with that comes a lot of persecution. With that comes yeah. a lot of um, a lot of evil because the devil doesn't like um, right. heaven touching earth. So anyway, so this is one of the gifts. I think one of the beautiful gifts that God has given us through the church. He's given us particular mystics. I have you ever watched? You you recently watched the Passion of the Christ. I did. Now there are moments in in that um, movie, for example, um, that were revealed not in scripture, but were revealed by a mystic. You know, for example, when they flip over the church and he sort of levitates. Yeah. That moment that was seen through a, a famous Catholic myth, mystic. I can't remember who it oh, is at wow, the moment. Oh wow! Okay. So, um, what's his name? The director, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson sort of used a lot of her works, so a lot of the interpretation were through the eyes of this mystic. And it's interesting, but um, yeah, but it's not—it's not on the same level as scripture. That's it's not right. on the same level, but it allows us to draw closer to God. Yeah. she was a mystic, and some mystics are so close, and so that they become doctors. They become doctors. So she eventually was traveling and. Um, Kind of got involved in politics and did a whole lot of bunch of stuff, but she began dictating letters to scribes, and she's credited with composing like over four hundred letters, which was so influential in the church that she was declared a doctor of the church. A doctor of the church, and that's exactly what it means to be a doctor of the church. Means to uh, what the church is saying when someone declares when the church declares someone a, a doctor is they're saying, hey, not don't only do what she does, but also do what she says. Yeah. What she's written is considered something that you should imitate, something you should follow, which is a great responsibility. It doesn't require intellect because you take some St. Teresa of Lisieux who was 24 years old mm -hmm. and who, who wrote, there's nothing intellectual about it, but it's just um, the church has declared that, hey, this writing is something to live by. Yeah. Pretty awesome about, yes, yeah, St. Catherine of Senna, she's doctor of the church and um, she died quite young because she was quite ill Um probably because of her extreme fasting. She was a big, big fan of fasting. Um, and her feast is April 29. And I guess that quote that we said, be who you're meant to be and you'll set the word on fire, that's such a, a quote that we should try to apply to our lives because, you know, God's given us all this, this incredible, incredible gifts and, and when we use them yeah. for the way that God intends us to use them, we will set yes. the world ablaze. Exactly. And stop trying to be someone you are not or some uh, envy someone else's gift because you're going to set the world on fire by being... You. What God has created you That's to be, right. exactly. Topic of the week. Moving on to our topic. So this question was actually sent into us, and we we were holding off until we got to this this um, feast of Pentecost, um, so we could talk about it. What is the Catholic stance on praying in tongues? Ooh, mm. controversy. So, oh, not 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 so controversy. Mm, no, I don't know. Interesting. Father Rob, tell us what what is praying in tongues. Well, I think the the prayer of in tongues is a, is a prayer. First of all, it's a prayer of intercession and it's a prayer of praise. Um, it is a gift, which I believe is available for all, but not everyone can receive it. Not everyone's able to receive it because it, it, it requires a lot of humility. It requires a lot of surrender, to surrender your speech, to surrender um, y y your mouth, your prayer to God. Um, but there's a lot, theologically what it is, and I I pray and I use the, this gift of tongues, and I think it's important that, um, like my bishop also did, the bishop who ordained me and the bishop who brought me he here to Australia. Um, I think it's a very powerful gift, but it is a gift of surrender. Basically, you're surrendering your your voice, your tongue, your your, your speech to God through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit praying through you to the Father in the name of Jesus. Scripture says that to ask anything in my name and I will give it to you. So everything that is prayed for in tongues, if it is authentic, if it is real, if it is done in humility, if it is done, of course, not to draw attention to yourself, um, in this gift, if you have received this gift, it's not about just starting to say rubbish, like mumbling, but it is a, a gift that is given. And I received this gift when I, when I was about 17 years old. I was prayed over during um, uh, what we call the baptism in the Spirit. Um, they prayed for the Holy Spirit and I literally went slain in the spirit. Mm. I fell down to the ground and I started praying in tongues without even knowing it. Oh, wow. And since then, um, I've still been praying. Now, some people have to make an effort to do it and ask for the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Holy Spirit gives it to us. How do you know if you have it? 
I don't know. Mm. I know it's just it's like any other gift, and I think it's not like a supernatural gift as we sometimes think it to be. It's if you start using this gift enough, you'll develop this gift. Um, and so it is. It is praying the Holy Spirit praying through you to the Father. Anything you ask in my name will be given to you. So it's a, a guaranteed prayer. It's a time of, also I use it to praise God as well. Um, it's a beautiful time, a, a gift to to praise praise God. Yeah, beautiful. And I thought we could talk about where do we first hear about um, you know the gift of tongues. And so we hear about it in the Acts of the Apostles after the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples with tongues of fire, um, which I'm sure you're going to hear this gospel passage this week. So what happens after this is the disciples are able to preach the good news. They're able to preach the gospel in all different languages and people from all parts of the world are able to understand them. And so we can see that, you know, God didn't give the disciples this gift for themselves, but he gave them this gift for the sake of building up the kingdom. Exactly, As any gift. You know, like we talked about a mystic. If it is used for your own good, then the church questions it. It says, hey, no, uh, no gift is ever given for you. Yeah. It is given always for the building of the church. Mm-hmm. Now, the gift of tongues is an exemption in many ways because it is, it's building our intercession, the gift of, of prayer um, between us and God. So there is a lot of building of self, but ultimately it's never prayer for the self. It's the prayer for holiness, for drawing us closer yeah. to God. Another place where it's mentioned, I just would like to mention is is 1 Corinthians 14, which is entirely about the gift of tongues. Okay, for example, it says, I'm just going to quote a few verses. It says, for, for anyone who speaks in tongues does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. So that's the definition um, that St. Paul gives. Um, and, I, and, and then he says this, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. You see, so, but um, and then he says, but I would rather you have your prophecy. So there are, it's, it's, he's not saying that it is the most important gift. It is a gift, uh, but he wishes and he hopes that everyone should have this gift because it's a very basic gift of prayer. Yeah. Um, also another verse, verse 13, it says this, for, for this reason, the one who speaks in tongues should pray that they may interpret what they say. So there's also the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Mm-hmm. I've been in prayer meetings when someone has prayed out loud in tongues and then someone else has interpreted that. Wow. And um, it, it, it's very powerful to witness that. Um, it, it, and it says this, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit is prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So it is a moment of surrender. You don't have to think. It's not about um, building your intellect. One more verse from um, 1 Corinthians 14. Tongues, the gift of tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. So it's also meant to be a sign for others. And it's a sign, not not that us go walking through the streets praying in tongues, but it's also as we intercede for others, as we pray for others, as we build others um, um, through, through, through our prayer of praise and intercession. Yeah, and so there was lots of talk about this around the time of St. Paul, as we just heard, but Tongues didn't really make a wide appearance in the church until not that long ago, actually, 1967. There was a, a group of university students praying together and they received um, this gift. Yes. And then um, after that, it led to the development of the charismatic movement in the church. Yes, Azusa Street. There was also as well in the Pentecostal movement. I actually went to this place. Um, also, it's not the first place that it happened, of course. This is where the tongues of fire came and they started speaking in different languages. And so, and it's also interesting that they all started to, you see, with, with the Pente, at the time of Pentecost, there was the gift of tongues, but I believe also there was the interpretation of the gift of tongues. People were understanding That's in their right. own language. Yeah. And so, and it, there's a sort of the opposite of it in the Old Testament. Yes. So really early on, I think it's Genesis chapter 11, I think there's the Tower of Babel. And so um, all of a sudden, the people who were building this tower couldn't understand each other because they were working like against what God wanted. Yes, and they're building it, their own kingdom. That's right. And then I, I guess it's so awesome. I love this connection um, at Pentecost because they're working to build the kingdom of God. It's like that whole thing was reversed. Exactly. And this is what the it's uh, this is what we, how you can tell if it is from God if it is unitative. Mm-hmm. not divis- divisive. Yeah. Okay, so if it brings unity, then it is of God. If it brings division, I can guarantee you, then it is not of God. Yeah. Even if God is the, ori- is the origin of this gift, it's not being used for the glory of God. So this is one of the ways we can discern that spirit. Okay, so that's plenty of content and we really hope that you've enjoyed. Yes. Um, I didn't mean that in a bad way. I just meant we've covered so much today in a, in a good way. 
We hope you enjoyed this um, week's episode and next week you'll be with Father Rob and Georgia. Um, Also, make sure you go and check out our giveaway. As we said at the start of this episode, this is episode 101, but to celebrate episode 100, we are having a giveaway on our Instagram page. That's at Catholic Influences underscore. You can win a devotional book as well as a free copy of our Introduction to the Bible course. So head to that post and tell us what's been your favorite moment of our 100 episodes of the Catholic Influences podcast. What, What have you loved? Also, they can be in touch with us um, through email podcast at frgministry.com, frgministry.com forward slash podcast, social media at Catholic Influences underscore on Instagram, Catholic Influences on Facebook, and also Cath Influences on Twitter, um, and also YouTube. If you want to watch what we look like when we're saying this podcast, <laughs> you can watch us at youtube.com forward slash frgministry. Yeah, and so also please check out our online courses, courses.frgministry.com because now we have subscriptions. It's $19, I think. It goes to a charity. Um, if you cannot afford it, there are ways uh, which you can get uh, um, not a free subscription, but a free course. Um, but also you get courses that are not available outside. For example, we just released one. Um, we did youth. just release our first youth course. It's on the sacraments, part one. This one focuses on the sacrament of baptism and the Eucharist. Um, yeah, we have, and we've got an exclusive Stages of the Cross resource. We're doing exclusive resources for our subscribers. So this is our call to you subscribe and you can, you can get your hands on those. Awesome. So thank you once again for listening to us. Um, we'll see you again. You'll hear from us again next week. God bless. Bye.